Hey, what's up? Hello. I'm happy to see Hello you. There. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Let's... Uh... Can you hear my guitar? Yes. Yes. How, how right. well how can we're, well we're actually live. Awesome. <laughs> Bear with me just a second. <laughs> hey everyone. Um, welcome to the Stranded live stream, episode 13. Uh, we had to work out, work through some last minute audio problems and I guess you caught the tail end of it. Um, very welcome um, to you, everyone that's watching. I'm just going to bring in uh, Per and Tupac. And, um, well, we're here to witness um, a live streamed Skype lesson um, with Per. And I've, I know you guys have emailed, and, and there's tons of different topics um, that you'll cover. Uh, but to back in, introduce yourself just uh, briefly, let everyone know um, who you are and, and what you do, etc. Oh no! Well, hello yeah. there. I am Tupac. I am from Argentina. We have the audio delay. I am okay. Tupac. Hello there. Now is it okay? Yes. Nice. Well, I am Tupac. I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires specifically. I play in two bands. In one, I got very lucky to get the gig, and in the other, my girlfriend is the singer because she's the only one who tolerates my guitar playing. So I am here to learn. <laughs> and, and you have participated in the Strandberg uh, spark group and uh, yeah. basically earned and, and won this lesson as, as a result. Yeah, not only that. If it wasn't because of Stranded Spark, this this thing I am holding right now wouldn't have ever been possible. So I am extremely grateful for that. And, and for the, those of you that are watching, if you don't know what, what Stranded Spark is, um, it is the official Strandberg user community. Um, we have um, periodic topics and challenges where you participate and, and do creative stuff and you can win stuff and you can make new friends and have fun. Um, so check us out on Facebook and, and um, join the community. Um, per, how is everything with you? Everything is good here. Uh, I tried to have a setup where I could uh, get the audio from my door from, from Cubase directly to Skype. But for some reason, I couldn't make it happen. You know, even even connecting, you know, uh, like r routing the audio from the interface back into the interface. For some reason, it still didn't show up in Skype. So I'm like, and I tried like three different pieces of software to make it happen. So, so now what's happening is that I'm, I'm running my guitar out from my studio monitors into the little camera <laughs> mic here. So I don't know if it sounds good. Sounds great. It's, you had the same issue I had a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe you have to turn it, turn up the volume a little bit, Per. Yeah. Yeah. yeah perfect. Well, uh, so I'm going to let you guys get at it and um, have fun for 45 minutes or whatever. Uh, those of you that are watching, uh, post comments, questions, and then we can spend uh, like the last 10, 15 minutes and um, post some additional questions to, to Per and, and to Puck. Cool. Um, so bear with me a sec while I lose myself here. Cool. 
Cool. Yeah, Argentina, you say? Yeah, from the other corner of the world. Yeah, it's far away from here. Yeah. So, uh, so we talked a bit, uh, we, we mailed each other a little bit and uh, just had a sort of pre-discussion about what, what kind of topics we would talk about. Yeah, you mentioned a lot of concepts and I wish we had the time to cover them all because they all sounded great. Um, but there are some that I hadn't even heard before, so I guess it will be cool to start with them if you want. Like synthetic scales, what are those? Uh, I scales. Well, it's like, or you could call it artificial scales, mm -hmm. because they are like scales that are made up. Like, uh, I mean, in uh, in Western music, you you use them like the you, you you either are in a minor key or you are in a major key, and then you got the all the different modes, the Dorian, the Phrygian, all of that. And those are like, I, I'm not sure about, you know, the proper terminology really, but I think of it like natural scales because it's like, yes. it's what music is made from. And then you have uh, stuff like harmonic minor and, and things like that, which is something that you encounter, for example, if you start introducing like dominant chords, and if you're in a minor key, and you introduce the the, the dominant chord, then you then it's not yes. exactly then you don't use the natural minor, then you use the harmonic minor uh, to have that. If you're in A minor, then you get uh, the 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 note that differs from natural minor and harmonic minor. Yeah, the the seventh. Yeah, and. Uh, and that's also like those are like natural scales because every scale is like a consequence uh, of the things like that. Whereas artificial scales are more like a theoretical construction, um, and uh, like the the ones. I mean, I'm sure there are thousands of scales like that, but there are a few that I use quite a bit. And uh, first, there's the the symmetric diminished scale you know that one yeah when you play uh you yeah, by, by tone or semitone yeah, and... exactly so you alternate a, a half step and a whole step like <laughs> and uh, a, a thing you can see with that scale that differs from uh, one of the more like, natural scales is that it's an eighth eight note scale That's whereas good. the other scales are all seven all have seven notes before, before you re reach the octave. Yeah. Uh, so so this is different, and and also because of the construction of the scale, it's symmetric. Uh, because it's half tone, half uh, whole tone, and then it repeats. So then it means that, like the formula repeats every minor third. So anything you play, you know. <laughs> You can uh, transpose everything you play, which is real cool. Uh, and uh, you, you can use it to, to to modulate from a key to another. Like when you are uh, on a dominant chord and you, you play a voicing from, instead of going to, to that tonic that that dominant chord is leading to, you can just... Uh, you can go to uh, to another tonic that is uh, 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 minor by third. By pushing the yeah, it's by like, pushing the symmetry, you're ex like pushing exactly. where the. So if you are if you are in, in E symmetric diminished, this is a good chord for that. You you can modulate because because it's like the same scale. You use the same scale, and you use that dominant chord to go to that dominant chord's tonic. 
Yeah. So that's one use for it that maybe it's more, it's usable in a jazz context. But uh, so, so that that's uh, one uh, like synthetic scale. There's also another one that some people call the symmetric augmented scale or only the augmented scale or, or symmetric major. And it's a similar concept uh, where uh, the formula is minor third, uh, a minor second, and then it repeats. So minor third, a minor second, minor third. So what you end up with is And is that to be used on a, on a specific kind of chord? Where would you apply that? Uh, well, or, uh, or in the I mean, context of the same scale, or can it be applied in perhaps in a more diatonic um, progression? Uh, I like to use it as its own thing, as its own uh, mode. So. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, you you try to find what kind of like triads that you can find in the scale, and and this scale is uh, whereas symmetric diminished was uh, symmetric in minor thirds that you can uh, modulate in minor thirds. This one is symmetric in major thirds. So anything you can play, anything you play, you can move around in major thirds. You. <laughs> Uh, so same thing with harmony. So if, if we were in E, you can do a uh, you have an augmented triad. And actually, any note in this scale can be harmonized with a with a augmented triad. And also, you you have a. In the root position, you get a, a, a minor triad or a major. Major or minor, so you, you can you can move that. M moving that by a major third. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Like on with an E pedal. Oh, yeah, and, and here I added a note. So if I have augmented and then I have the minor third on top. And, and with the E. And then you keep the E as the bass and you move, move this. That's pretty cool sounding. And yeah. if you if you if you do tapping or if you play keyboards or if you're two guitar players, you can experiment uh, with combining these triads. Uh, yeah. Because as a guitar player, you have four four fingers on your left hand, and it's, it's like it's it's hard to you know, you can't fret too many notes. And and uh, what I think is cool is if you can play six notes at the same time. So for example, if I if I was was to play an an E major triad, and then on, if you play the piano, you can have that in the left hand, and then then the right hand play another triad yeah. from that scale. So maybe if you play higher up, a uh, uh, C minor triad, and maybe we can hear what it sounds like. For me, that's just like it sounds so deep and and cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's that 
also what you will call. I actually, the... I actually use that in a in a song. I use uh, uh, in the song "Holographic Universe." There's a tapping thing that is derived from this scale, mm -hmm. and it's in in A. So what I do is I tap minor triad, uh, but I add the major seventh below. And then I move it up in major thirds, like. Oops. Yeah, the the same shape that goes symmetrically. Exactly. I, I, I don't I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> Um harmonically what's happening it's uh what chords will will fit that? Uh well the the oh, what the what will be the bass be playing during that? An A. And the and the uh the riff is something like uh, the riff actually plays uh, uh augmented triads. And I've got a tuned drop A. I got A E A, and I play augmented triads on all strings for, uh, for, from the open string. Like remember that uh, you can put an augmented triad on any note in this scale. Yeah. And it goes yeah, on you're, you're completely in in that realm. Yeah. So that's that's a rhythm part, and then the, the the lead part plays those minor, major, seventh things really quickly. Right. Cool. Yeah, and uh, beyond that, for synthetic scales, uh, you can also contract con construct scales that uh, are symmetrical like this, but they don't repeat every octave. Uh -huh. and as you can see, uh, these scales. Where like you, if you if you divide one octave into four parts, then you have minor thirds, right? Yes. So what happens if you divide two octaves by by three or four? Uh, so if you divide it by three, you get a, a minor sixth, and then you can you can you can do something that repeats. Uh, over two octaves yeah. every every minor sixth so for example yeah. if you if you start by playing a lydian scale so this is e lydian but you only play up to, up to the fifth and then you play a c lydian and then an uh, uh, a flat Lydia. A flat. And then you're back to E. Yeah. <laughs> so so this is like Which to me that's just a glorious sound, though it's you can't exactly like take this scale and, and pick notes and 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 make a chord. It's it's more like something you play that it's that is a way of playing outside of the key, where you could be like an Elydian and then you do something like this uh, as, yeah. as, as, the, as a stream of notes. And then you yeah. end up in, in perhaps e the important thing is this this, this destination point yeah. more than and there's something that happens when when you start twisting it when you're in e lydian and you go to c lydian and then when you go to the next step it's like your ear can almost anticipate where, where you're going yeah i mean there's a if you would play instead of playing 
uh, A flat chord, and if you played A flat uh, major instead, mm. for me that would be so, sound wrong. If it was just you know one like chromatic note off, it would for me yeah. it would... it's like artificial. To me, that sounds a little bit wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. That's when the name comes to play. Like synthetic, it's like an artificial place that you build by repeating patterns. Yeah. So nice. And those kinds of that, things, that that's what like people like uh, Alan Horsworth did all the time. And I, I mean, I I, I feel like it, it's something these kinds of scales that uh, take a, an, a couple of octaves or more to repeat. Uh, that's something that I've just been starting to scratch the surface on. So. It's like I, I just learned it myself. So I'm, I'm sharing it. So like so, we're we're all together. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, is that also something that you would also relate to the um, superimposed structures that you mentioned? The thing about combining perhaps different triads. Yeah. Over sure. one another, I mean, or yeah, or yeah. are superimposed structures some something else? Well, uh, the thing I or, did when or are I played, they complete? When I play the the E major and you play the C minor, that's that's superimposition, superimposition, and and basically what that is is that in harmony, the way we like construct chords is by stacking thirds. That's the, like the traditional way of thinking about it, because you have a triad, you start with the one and then the third and the fifth. <laughs> Uh, and then you add the seventh, yeah. and then com comes all the the, the the like the coloration notes, the the upper structure. <laughs> like and then you have the ninth, eleven. Well, this is a sharp eleven, and a thirteen. And if you add another third, then you're back to the root. So. Uh, so this is like for me this this is super easy to visualize if if you if you do it on a keyboard. I'm not a keyboard yeah. player, but it's 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 easy to like flesh out chords if if you if you see the the notes the way you do on a keyboard, because every note that just has one single you know one single point in in the physical universe where you can find it. Uh, so left hand plays the one three or five one three and five. And then the other notes are like the, the coloration notes. Uh, yes. That that makes the chords sound jazzy and stuff. Uh, and when I when I solo when I when I play I I use these chords a lot, but I'm I try to you know I I'm aware of them, and it's like when I play the other notes. Uh, that's where you have the tension, and when you go back to the one, three, five, that's the the, the release notes. So so when so, so when you I, will see that when improvising, you are thinking as the rest place when you are in the yeah the so notes I mean, of the chord and using the other triads as tensions as coloration. Exactly. So if I have a, a, a D pedal. I play the root note, then this is obviously, you know, this is not an attention at all. Then you play the second note, and then you're like, you're not at home. Like, it's a beautiful sound, but it's not as restful. Then you get to the third, and then you're back to something, and then maybe, maybe the sharp and even. That's a lot of drama. So even even when you you play faster, it's it's like still something to be aware of where you have the tension. So 
when I play, I often I can choose to 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 center my my playing around the uh, the basic triad one three five. Right? Yes. So if I'm in D, I could you know just play the triad notes. <laughs> I can only play the like the tension notes. Uh, or I can I can uh, go in between them. So I, I can you know play the like triad notes but mostly and you could I mean you could hear from listening to that that something is shifting you know and uh, yes and that's what what you can do uh, now I'm superimposing uh, harmony you know as a melody because what I just did was like <laughs> So I, I, it's like you have an artificial uh, chord progression on, on top of your chord. So even if the if the backing is only, yeah, then you can choose to. It's like you you're imagining, and also what's happening is that you. Uh, that's like uh, the release part. There's no tension, and then, then you want to go back. And, uh, and and you can use this uh, when you when you construct chords as well, and and when you when you do it in in your melodic playing in your solo playing, it's like you you're going from you know the the consonant to the more dissonant and, and back, uh, but when you play in chords, you can you can have both. So for example, you can yes. have. I can have the D triad because this was all D Lydian. So if you have a D triad, some of these chords you can actually play on guitar. Like if, if you if you can bar notes. So this is one example. If I play a D, D triad, first position, the first inversion. So you start on F sharp uh, on the E string. On the E string. Oh. And then you borrow. Okay. Yes. So there you have a D triad, and then you squeeze in an E triad on the top strings. It's also 12th fret. So. Yeah. There you can clearly hear both triads at the same time. And it's like, even if that is a pretty complex chord, and there's there is some tension to it, it's also something that's like you can stay on that chord. It's like it feels still feels restful. Yeah, totally. And not all triads work as well together. I mean, if if this was instead of D Lydian, if this was D like uh, major. Then you would have an E minor on top instead, and that is not not as nice. But usually, usually every every mode or scale usually have like one or possibly two uh, upper extension triads that that work really well. So if if you're in major. Uh, you have the triad, the major triad from the fifth, that sounds good. So if you, if you're in C major, you can you can put a G G major triad. On top. Yeah. And 
I mean, uh, it's it's difficult to find a voicing where you, where you can actually have all the notes. <laughs> So, one, yeah. but, but you can also do it as a as a slash chord where you have the the triad and just the root. That means I have the. You're gonna miss the third, and uh, but it's it's like a good a good approximation of the kind of the sound you have. Uh, uh, which will be the other go-to combinations to use, depending on the on what's on the bass. I mean, if if I have a major chord, you mentioned the fifth. Yeah. What else and, will and if, or, if you're if you're in the, in like Ionian, like natural major, what you call it, then it's uh, it's really if you want to be able to play it. Uh, as one voicing with the root triad and the, and the major triad from the fifth, it's basically that one that f that feels stable. Uh, you can you can do the other ones, but they're gonna sound more unresolved somehow. But if you go to to Dorian, D Dorian, then you can then you can put a C major triad on top. And for, for Lydian, you can do both from the fifth. F Lydian, you can do a, a, a C major triad. Or you can do from the second scale degree, so a G triad. And then there you can note that when you do it from the fifth, it's, it's not as typical Lydian because now we know that yeah. it, it, it resembles the the other. yeah it, it resembles the major scale, but if you instead use it from the second scale degree, so a G G major triad on top of the F, which, which might be a, this one that you played in D. There there, there is an F. Um, yeah. In, in Mixolydian, you can do, if you do an, an F triad, you, ha you have to be careful because in the G triad, you have the, uh, the major third, and the F triad uh, has, the, has the fourth. So, so you have to be careful to not have that kind of interval. And this is tricky on a guitar, but if you <laughs> if if you have the uh, that the, the fourth in the scale, which is which is the fifth in the in the F major triad, I'm losing a lot of people here, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> but if you put that, so you, you have that next to the the third in the in the G triad. G triad plus. So you have the G triad, and then you have an F triad on top. And I mean, this is really hard to play, but... What is that? So this is the G triad? Yeah. I think you're on the wrong, on the wrong set of strings, because you play a six string. Oh, yeah. But then that one. I don't know. I need more fingers. <laughs> Send them to Strandberg and I will attach them. So if you do it like that, it works. There's actually a common chord that 
that's almost that. It's the, it's the F sharp with the open strings on top. That's almost a uh, uh, major triangle on top. You're just lacking the, the G sharp. Well, and then there's there's a million other combinations that are cool. So, <laughs> uh, uh, and and what you can do more is another way of doing super super imposition impositions is uh, to do entire uh, chord progressions on top of static chord or a static riff. I mean, I. I do a lot of uh, like guest solos for, for people, and I get so many, many uh, uh, solo parts that are only like, yeah, it's just one note, and then, and then I'm like, oh fuck me, <laughs> this is like, this like, uh, I mean, it, it that might sound cool on, on its own, but if I'm supposed to play solo. On top of it, it's like really hard to find inspiration when it's just, you know, that kind of things. Yeah. Um, so, so you have to create create the harmony on your own, but by so the that, melody. Yeah. So, and sometimes I I record a like a synth pad or something with the chords, and, and sometimes you mm -hmm. might have if you have a few few notes in 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 the riff, maybe if you have the root and then. Like if there's that kind of uh, notes that are involved, then maybe you can't do a, a, a major key thing because then it's gone. <laughs> yeah. but, but for example, in that case, if that would imply something like something Phrygian, maybe Phrygian dominant, then maybe I'll do like one bar of this was in B, so one bar of B. B triad, and then one bar of a C, back to B, then maybe A minor, uh, and that's like all from 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 that scale, and the riff is something something cool, something that the kids like these days. But then me as a grown up has to do this. Uh, other things on top. So so then when I play, uh, sometimes I, I I have a synth pad that plays whatever chords I have, yeah. and sometimes I don't. But I even if I have it or not, I play as if I had it. So then I play over the over the B triad, and then over the C triad triad. Back to the B, and then the uh, A minor. So if I if I play that a few times around, and you can hear what it sounds like. case I, I used mostly notes from uh, from B dominant region but I can also now when I have the, the chords superimposed I can treat every every triad differently so maybe the B one I used the dominant region yeah. and the C maybe I flattened the uh, the seventh in in C Lydian even if that means that I'm not playing the the root note I'm playing. Yes. Because it's it's just for brief moments I, I can do that because it's also it leads me back to the to the B scale. 
and then when I go to A minor, what I like to do is I like to play, instead of playing uh, A Dorian or, or Dorian with an augmented fourth, or those would, would be the scales that are close to B dominant region. Uh, instead, I uh, I used the A melodic minor uh, sharp fourth, uh, which is ba basically uh, let me see. It's it's the same notes that I used in in over the B, but I I raise mm -hmm. the G, G, the G note. So it's it's kind of a it's kind of a Lydian sound, but with a minor third in relation to A minor. Yeah. Really cool sounds. It sounds so open and nice. So this ties perhaps with another subject, um, sure. which is fretboard visualization. Will you say then that the triads um, uh, have a big role on how you visualize the fretboard, or do you have any other? Tips on how to how to look at it. You you get guided by chords, by shapes, but by what? By by all of it, I guess. Uh, yeah. But um, I mean, triads are important, and, and uh, nowadays they they talk about the caged system. Uh, that wasn't a, really a thing when I was a kid and went to schools. Uh, even even though I you know I. I understand now that it's something that you know it's uh, it's the way I think too that you you have the basic shapes like the C the the G A C yes. and and you and you can see them everywhere so you have the C shape but you, if it's transposed here I mean you you can see it so even if you play the scale in your scale uh, like uh, the the sh kind of shape you have for your scale you can you can you can see the the triad, the the chord notes, even when you're playing, uh, and I guess that's what I do when I improvise over chord progression. Is that I, if I play over a G and I'm here, I can see it. Even if I don't play, you know, an arpeggio, I can see the the chord note. Yes. Uh, so that's that's important, and and. Stuff I've, I've done to sort of develop the kind of fretboard knowledge that I have is I have tried to to move around in a horizontal direction. So instead of like moving in this direction, you, you go in this direction, which is also to me that's more, um, it feels more like natural to think about melodies and uh, and music, like the way you, you, if you, if you visualize things on a keyboard, you have everything, you know, from from low to high. Yeah, it's it's really easy. So if you play melodies on a guitar, if you if you are in the position and and you're gonna change string, it's like you're so occupied about knowing where the notes are that it's, that really messes with you. But if you only play on one string. You can sort of make out, you know, how far you're gonna jump to the next note. You, you can get a sense for that just by using your ear. But when you when you go to, go to another string, it's like it's like you play piano. Then you have to jump to the next piano that is transposed, and then you jump to the next piano that. Yeah. Is and imagine having to do that playing piano like uh, that's basically what yeah. we're facing with the guitar. So. Any kind of exercise that that'll like break you out from the the you know the fixed positions. Even even though that, that's important too. I I used to 
try to learn every scale you know in in every possible position so if if, if you have g major you, you play it in this position three notes a string and then you move up to the next position and put three notes per string next one next one and and so on so you, so you got that covered but when you're practicing that it's like that doesn't sound like music it's like this this I don't think there's a song that goes like that ever real <laughs> song but if you break it up not that su successful <laughs> yep <laughs> if you if you break it up and, and do the same kind of thing but on uh, just a pair of strings adjacent strings so if I do E major and I do three notes per string and then you jump up to the next position that that sounds a little bit closer to music even if it still sounds like an exercise, <laughs> but it's, it's not it's, it's not as horrible and and using that is that's like when you solo it's that, that's easier to to jump around yeah. between that when yeah, you it, make it flows better and yeah physically yeah. it um, helps you better to to flow with what you are playing i guess yeah and when you when you are somewhere and you want to go somewhere else then you like you you know where everything is so if if you're doing things in this position you know you know where where things are here Also, sliding is such a nice way of, hmm. of moving around. It's such a nice sound. I guess it's something that's like a bit more similar to to singing, you know. And also, if you if you know everything by three notes per string, but if you know the next position, you know where the next uh, note is if you want to stretch. Like. So I, I guess we are reaching the, the limit of our time. Um, really? Perhaps oh, uh, I talked too suddenly. much. Suddenly, <laughs> um, I have perhaps this is more a philosophical one. <laughs> we, um, what would you say is the the road to follow for for an intermediate player like me to achieve a higher level of proficiency uh, how to be disciplined or how to organize schedules practice routines that's a really good question I, and i feel like it's something that a lot of people are struggling with because i get questions like that a lot um, and uh, like when i when i did most of my practicing like when i when i was practicing hard that was when I was, you know, still a teenager, and I didn't have to worry about making money. I didn't have to worry about, you know, laundry and stuff like that because I had my parents. They gave me money, and then they washed my my dirty underwear and everything. So I could just put all my my time into into practicing. I, and I went to 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 school, and uh, I didn't go to any of the like regular classes. I didn't go to Swedish and English and math and and geography and, and that kind of stuff. I just skipped all of that and, and played guitar instead and they threw me out of the school. Uh, that, maybe that wasn't good if I wanted to have a different kind of career. But I, I made time. It worked practice. out. Though. Yeah, I, I made time for practicing and not only practicing guitar. I I spent like at least an hour a day uh, practicing writing a four part classical harmony and things like that. I did air, air training and uh, which was helpful also, but I had the time. And then suddenly you find yourself being a grown up 
and you have all these things and you if you maybe if you don't do music for a living you have to like you have a day job and you commute and you have kids and uh and then it's much more important that you have a like a clear vision of like what you want to do you know what kind of kind of guitar player do you, do you want to be what what do you want to be good at and uh what don't what what are the things that you don't care about too much because i i mean Mm-hmm. Back when I was in school, you know, I was obsessed with learning everything, and like I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not learning classical music. I don't have like I was so focused on everything else. But I can feel like ah, I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm not playing nearly as much much jazz that I probably should, you know. And but then later I was like, I, I don't care for mo- most jazz music. You know, I don't listen to. It. I don't listen to old swing and bebop big band uh, stuff i don't listen to it so why should i spend you know a lot of time you know learning it like like you you got to spend time on doing like cultivating the stuff that you you want to have in your life i guess how's that for for being deep <laughs> i'm i'm breaking in here convinced me to <laughs> Let's let's take some some audience uh, questions. Um, we have one from from Jay. He says, "Pear, you have a very unique sound. Uh, so, did you consciously spend time creating and honing your own sound, or or did it just occur naturally from from all those years of, of practice?" I'm not sure. I agree that it's very that like, that's unique. Because mm, I, it is. I, 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 I think I, I like I wear my influences on my sleeve, <laughs> but uh, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I'm very flattered, of course, and it's like it's it's something to strive for. So if if there is something in all of the stuff that I ripped off, if there's like something that's turned into my own, that's that's really cool. Uh, but I, I, I mean, on one hand, I've sounded sort of the same since since my teens. If I listen back to recordings, there's still stuff that I do. There's something about how I play that I still do, even if things have been refined and I know a lot more stuff today. There's still like a core of, of something that's me. And I think that probably everyone has that, and I don't think I don't think you have to be you know you do have, you don't have to be worried about you don't have to worry about being original because everyone's original um, unless you're like really trying to sound like someone else if you but it's like if 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 I wore glasses like Mr. Strandberg has and then I got a haircut like he does well i have to have a wig but in and i try to talk like him then that would be silly and then i like uh, here's my guitar band it's called nilsberg guitar then that would be silly because i would try so hard but i i don't have to try very hard to to talk like myself and be myself and you know so if you if you do, just you know just be yourself it will happen. Um, Craig says, uh, question, will we ever hear any news of the upcoming Scar Symmetry album? Yes. <laughs> I, I don't really have any news to present during this, uh, during this thing, but there's, there's stuff hap- happening uh, behind the scenes. Yeah. So... I hope I will will have something official uh, sooner than later. Uh, something a little more on topic. Uh, does Pear ever experiment with more obscure tunings? I guess I have a, a six-string Strandberg that uh, I, I rarely play six-string uh, these days because none of my bands call for it. But uh, 
like some 20 years ago, I experimented for a while with uh, tuning a guitar in fifth because Alan Holter does it. And, and uh, so, yeah, don't be a copycat, but sometimes be a copycat. <laughs> uh, so, and I did that like 20, 25 years ago uh, until I sold that guitar that I had tuned in fifth. And then I never bothered like setting another guitar up with that. But one day I, I just had the urge to try it again. And then I, uh, Ola had an, a six string uh, lying around in, in the office. No one wanted it. So I was like, oh, okay, I can uh, bring it home and uh, be the shelter for it. Uh, yeah. So I tuned that to fifth and I've been experimenting with that, which is really cool because then on, on six strings, you get the same uh, range as you get on an eight string plus a semi note. It's like an eight string plus one. This is really cool. And and everything, uh, I mean, since the fifth is an inverse uh, fourth, everything you play on the on the strings that are, like have the, the fourth uh, relationship, uh, you can just uh, change the, the position around, the, like the, the, the pattern, and and then end up with the same kind of thing. So if, like if you have a, what would be a G chord on this one. If you, if you change it, then, you know, that would look like this or look like this. Then you have uh, also a major triad, but since uh, you change it, it's it's in, in a spread position. So, so instead of being sounding like, it's gonna sound like. So, so that little thing is gonna cover a, a, a much bigger space. Um, and and it's it's like super hard to play small intervals. Like even thirds are are tricky. Like a minor third looks like this. On the fourth guitar, it's like this. But on that one, it's like this. So uh, and and uh, and a small second will be like that. So it, it just changes everything, and you and you can do some really cool stuff. And one day I will record something with it. But I guess that's that's it. Otherwise, I, everything is in standard tuning or or drop tuning, where I drop the the thickest string down a whole step. And also, sometimes, uh, like in Meshuga, the guitar is tuned down a half step all the strings. Well, um, and Oli says, um, what what keeps you motivated, Per? How, how do you stay inspired and keep on progressing as a musician and guitarist? Uh, I guess I'm just, I just love music and I'm uh, I'm a curious soul. I, I want to hear, I want to hear new things. I, I want to, you know, I want to try to bring, bring new things into, into the world myself, which is, I guess, what you do when you, when you do music is like you, Sometimes it, it feels like uh, like inspiration can be a really cool thing because sometimes I play and it it feels like I mean you can wonder where where, where does the music come from and, and sometimes it, it feels like you're connected to something outside of yourself and notes pop mm -hmm. out. I mean often those notes are quite horrible but sometimes they are nice but sometimes you know it feels like. I mean, you get surprised. What's where, where? Where does everything come from? So I think us musicians, we were like downloading notes from the big celestial pirate bay. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac, what, what, what do you say? What 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 motivates and inspires you? Um, well, inspirations like the one I have next to me. Um, yeah, the aspiration to reach a, a level that I am comfortable with, and I I want to to be able to one day have what Per just mentioned about feeling something, having the music inside my ears, and being fully capable of translating that into actual listenable music so do you feel you you're still 
it motivates you to become better from yeah. an, um, almost a technical perspective then. Yeah, I have still a long way to go. <laughs> we, we all have. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's fascinating to, to hear you talk, Per, about when, when you were younger, how you were really, I mean, obsessed, I guess, by music. Uh, is, do, do you still feel that you have a lot of that? Yeah. I mean, when, when I was young, like even before I started playing guitar, uh, I remember like putting on, on albums of my of my parents, and uh, sometimes I heard stuff. You know, I I could pick up that there was like chord progressions that I've never heard, uh, and that was something that really intrigued me. It, it, it intrigued me before I even knew what it was. There was just some songs that I I wanted to go back to because I, I you could just tell that it was something different and and it sounded really pleasing to me and then I as I got got old got, got older good older <laughs> sorry about that uh, I, I could you know uh, intellectualize it and start to understand what was happening uh, and as you grow older the more stuff you hear it's like sometimes you feel like you've heard everything but new stuff comes along all the time but it's an it's an itch that needs to be scratched. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, also about uh, about music and practicing, we all want to be we all want to get better. But but it's also like uh, it's the journey, not the destination. So you can make music from you know from day one. You you don't have to sit around and wait, you know, until you know how to sweep, pick, or, or whatever. Like, I think that's, that's something you forget. I mean, music is music is for everyone. It's not only for the ones who have tons of talent. Like, and everyone can, you know, sing something or hit hit something and make rhythm. That's also cool. Some like one of my. One of my favorite venues to play music is to like just jam whatever songs with uh, with friends when everyone's a bit drunk. And uh, most of the people I hang with maybe can't can't join in on a song and just instantly know the chords. But everyone you know can everyone can sing and everyone can you know pick up something and hit and make and make a rhythm and and uh, that's just a, one one favorite way of jamming for me, you know, when everyone can join in. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think the um, time is up. Um, yeah, I was lost for a good while. I hope others, <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys that know more about music, followed along. Um, and if you didn't the first time, this this stream stays up on on the Facebook page, and it's it, it will also be archived on our YouTube channel, so you can watch this as many times as you want. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you hit Tupac up because now he knows everything about this stuff. <laughs> right? First, I have to rewatch this like seven times, <laughs> and then you can ask me. <laughs> Well, awesome stuff. Um, thank you so much, uh, both of you, um, Tupac, for, for participating in the Spark community and uh, basically earning slash winning this, this lesson and pair for um, taking the time out and uh, providing it. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Look out in our social channels for uh, an upcoming live stream soon enough. And um, auf Wiedersehen. See you soon, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Goodbye.